ABC's chief medical correspondent. She's opening up about how she and her family are coping after her ex-husband, Dr. Robert Ashton, took his own life. Rob was the one that I respected and loved very much. And this conversation is, well, it's been very real for me. So, are you okay sharing how you learned that Rodney was gone? Yeah, I mean, it was like a movie moment. I, um, it was a Saturday morning, it was about 10 o'clock, and I got a phone call from the doorman saying, um, Dr. Ashton, there are three detectives coming up to your apartment. Mm -hmm. And then, then it, it became like a nightmare scene from a movie that we've all seen. I opened the door, three Port Authority detectives were standing there, they showed me their badge, they said, are you Dr. Jennifer Ashton? And I said, yes, can I help you? And they said, let's go inside and sit down. And I said, what's this about? And they said, ma'am, please come inside and sit down. And I sat down in my living room, like this far away, and the lead detective said, we found your name on the remains. And I didn't even hear the rest of the sentence and I collapsed on the floor onto his knees. And, and, I, ju and I heard him say, uh, your husband left a note in his pocket that said, call my wife. And I just started screaming, no. <laughs> And then my son came out of the room because he heard me screaming. And Alex said, Mom, is it Grandpa? And, and Chloe had thought the same thing when she heard, which I guess doesn't bode well for my dad. Everyone thought that he was <laughs> in jeopardy. I don't know why my dad, thank God, is healthy. And I said, no, Alex, it's Daddy. It's Daddy. And then my thoughts just, and then everything just, kind of became like a blur. I couldn't even hear. They handed me a card. They were so kind, so compassionate. And they left. And Alex and I were just, I mean, we we were hysterical. Had, had you ever had friends, people you knew well, lost to suicide before? Yeah. And, and was, was it... Uh, is it the same as my experience? We had no idea yeah. this was going to happen? Yeah. Um, I'm the fourth person in my small circle who has lost a loved one to suicide. The fourth person, Mehmet. And despite it being so close to me, never did I think it would happen to me. Ever. Suicide is now the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. The 10th. Made a top 10 list. About 47,000 suicides a year is about 130 a day. Those are numbers, only numbers. And then for, for each of those people, as I'm sure you know the statistic, 135 people are directly impacted by each suicide. So when you multiply that times 47,000, we are talking about 6 million people a year in this country who are going through what you went through, what I went through, every single day. So as ABC's medical correspondent, Jen is entrusted with reporting and shedding light on all the health areas, but it took her a while to break her silence on this, and here's the moment when it happened. Jen, I know this issue hit home for you last year, something you haven't talked about before uh, on the air, and that is the suicide of your ex-husband. I really wanted to help people understand the, the second tragedy that happens to the family that's left behind. But, you know, it leveled us. It leveled me. Uh, my children were 16 and 18 at the time, and I was totally unprepared for the physical and emotional trauma that comes in the wake of that. So that was 14 months after we lost Rob. How did you feel when you are done speaking for the very first time about his loss. You know, Mehmet, I was so nervous, Mehmet, for that. I just, I, I couldn't imagine how I would get through that. It's so much easier for me to be the expert answering George's questions than speak like that. And as soon as it was over, I broke down, I started to cry, and I reached for my phone, and I had dozens of texts emails, social media. By the time I got back to the hotel, Chloe and Alex said, Mom, do you see how many people are suffering? 
You have to talk about it. So that's how I did it. We'll be right back. <laughs> 